To The Point with Michael Williams. Good morning and welcome to To The Point. Families, communities across our five counties begin the long process of recovery after Hurricane Milton. By one count, state officials say the storm spawned 120 plus tornado warnings throughout Florida. And so many of those created paths of destruction here at home. I talked with Treasure Coast State Representative Toby Overdor Friday for a snapshot of where we are and where we're going after Milton and those catastrophic tornadoes. Well over 600 structures in Martin County were impacted by the various tornadoes that we had uh, in St. Lucie County. We have tracked about 17 uh, tornadoes that came through uh, St. Lucie County at one point or another. 17 uh, tornadoes, actual yes, touch. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't have uh, National Weather Service data on all of those, so we don't know the intensity, um, but the emergency management system and their team did an incredible job. They tracked a lot of them. I, I looked at a map yesterday that showed the paths of, of many of these that were on the ground. It is just amazing. So uh, just to, to see what, what happened within uh, our two counties here in Martin and St. Lucie, and then to combine that with all the activity that we had in Palm Beach, um, as far north as Brevard, over in- uh, Indian River, Okeechobee. Okeechobee, yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. So- um, my, Damage in St. Lucie, what are we looking at there? Um, hundreds upon hundreds of structures that have been damaged. Um, our company just finished certifying the one uh, large warehouse that was absolutely demolished over a million square feet. Your environmental company, the other hat you uh, The civil engineering side of it, yep. Uh -huh. And then we also had, uh, you know, mobile home after residential structure, after, I mean, a complete line of concrete power poles that go up King's Highway were decimated. Um, I came through right after a hurricane or sorry, a tornado had hit on I-95 and vehicles were damaged. It, I mean, the indiscriminate damage was absolutely amazing to, to witness. And then how delicate, and I, I use that word is the only thing I can think of, a tornado can be in that I walked through a trailer park yesterday, the entire roof is gone, yet the newspaper is sitting on the table next to where um, the person was sitting completely um, unhurt, as well as the robe over the back of the chair. It, it, it blew me away and um, of course, how we all, indiscriminate these, these yeah, storms can be. I, I'm getting chills listening to you say that. Of course, we all grieve for the six lives lost to St. Lucie County as we, as we sit here. I I, we pray that number doesn't change, but as I tape this with you, we grieve there, and now people have the long task of rebuilding and recovering, and I know it's going to be difficult, but fundamentally, what can you do to assure your constituents that you're going to bulldoze as best you can through red tape so that local, state, or federal resources aren't just promised, but are delivered and in an expedited way? So I was on the phone yesterday with uh, CFO Jimmy Petronas, and of course, he was here last night as well. We're going to be uh, setting up some opportunities for uh, insurance town halls in the, in the area here so that folks can go and uh, deal with their insurance companies directly, look at state assistance directly, and not have to do it over the phone and internet-wise. Um, we're also looking at ways that we can potentially get some temporary housing in here. Uh, the governor has done an incredible job of, uh, of gaining some temporary housing, trailers, that type of thing, and uh, as well as FEMA. Uh, and uh, pending this uh, this interview here, I'm, I'm potentially going off to go meet with a, the national FEMA director up here in St. Lucie, uh, who's taking an interest in this. And I have to say, partisanship aside, uh, the governor and FEMA and the president have been coordinating directly in, in all of these issues. And uh, Florida has been well prepared. I mean, nobody could prepare for the amount of tornadoes that we had. I had a conversation with the director of the emergency management in St. Lucie, in his 27 years of emergency management, he had never seen a day like this whatsoever. I've interviewed you a lot of times over the years. I hear the steel in your voice and the glint in your eye that uh, if there's red tape that's gonna be plowed through, you all are committed to doing that because people can't wait for help. They can't wait for temporary shelter. They can't wait for an insurance check. Let me also ask you, it's the time, unfortunately, when scammers are out and about. What, in terms of any laws, uh, will will help mitigate that. And what is your advice to people? Because people are anxious and fly by nights tend to come by and Certainly. say, oh, we'll take care of you. Oh, we'll go with us. We'll do absolutely. Absolutely. What is your so, warning? What is the protection? 
So the state of Florida um, has uh, very strong laws as regards um, to the, the scamming side of it towards unlicensed contractors. We have uh, an entire uh, area that we deal with for unlicensed contractors. If you are unsure if there is or is not a licensed contractor, first of all, get a written estimate. Always get a written estimate um, from whoever it may be. And I would advise that people get more than one um, as well. They will also need uh, to get a, uh, a building permit and that can be done through your local municipality. So check with Martin County, St. Lucie County, Palm Beach County, they all have Indian River, Okeechobee, your own county. Yeah. Absolutely, Indian River and Okeechobee all have uh, the list of, of certified contractors that are in the area here and do not get taken advantage of by doing it that way. Be cautious with it. Yes, you have a serious repair that needs to be done. The worst thing in the world that can happen is if they do a tape with, uh, do it with tape and, and glue and all of a sudden it comes apart again and then you have to get, do it again. Or the bottom line I hear from you. Code. Yeah, don't let somebody on your roof unless you absolutely have been presented that they're licensed. You've checked that they've been licensed. Absolutely. And, verify. and, and if it's not in writing, tell them goodbye. Absolutely. That's that's the best way to handle it. Uh, and then and, verify uh, that what they wrote is not some fly-by-night contract. You can And you can go to state sites, uh, Department of Professional Regulation, make sure you're dealing with somebody licensed. Yes, the state, and, and if you have any questions on that also, the state has an information line as well where you can you can call. That state information line is 1-800-342-3557. That's 1-800-342-3557. And there are English, Spanish, and Creole speakers on that line. Sir, there's so much we could talk about today, and I know you've got meetings to go to. Uh, final early thoughts here, and in a broader sense, the insurance marketplace, it's already been such a strain for people. And uh, first and foremost, all of our focus is on helping the people directly battered by the storm. As we are able to begin to move past that, where will we stand in terms of our insurance marketplace? And uh, it's already been such a struggle. Well, um, thankfully, the insurance marketplace was getting better prior to uh, the past two storms that we had. We had nine new um, companies come in. Any claims that are out there, we have made sure that, in fact, the insurance company you have cannot cancel you until 60 days after that claim is complete. So if you have a policy, you are 100 percent going to get paid for that policy. If you are um, in uh, in issues with those, please contact my office, um, contact other regional uh, representatives that, that are out there, um, state representatives, they will help you through that. If they don't, contact my office. We're happy to help you to get through that process. CFO Patronus is um, strong on this issue, has done a great job, as well as the insurance commissioner, and uh, they are ready to help. Representative Overdorf, I know at times like this, uh, it's uh, the closeness with your constituents. It's it's both um, legislatively, emotionally, uh, and you call that area your your home. I know you've got a lot of emotions uh, running through your mind as well as you go out to help. We won't keep you from it, but uh, we know we'll be talking to you a lot more as you continue to work. And many others, as you said so aptly, across the aisle work on behalf of people in need. Thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. Well, it's my pleasure, Michael. If I can just give you one one more small insight here. Um, I was sitting at the Emergency Operations Center when many of these calls came in. We had um, 300 uh, calls, sorry, 900 calls in a 200, uh, sorry, in a two hour span. Um, all these things coming in. The winds were coming up. We had to, we just found out the Spanish lakes have been hit. We had to get um, search and rescue teams up there. I cannot tell you how well that agency ran in St. Lucie County, but it wasn't just that. It was Martin County responded, Palm Beach County responded, Indian River County, Okeechobee. Then the state got on the line. We got teams from as far away as Ohio and West Virginia all came in. But the trick was we had to get that search and rescue completed by 11 o'clock when those winds were going back up to over um, hurricane strength. So it was a very stressful time but I'm so proud of the individuals that were involved in this and to see them all working so seamlessly together, it was absolutely amazing. Kudos to our emergency management people. Absolutely. They did an incredible job in, in working this together and making sure, and unfortunately we couldn't get to everybody, but when we were able to transport well over 26 people with life-threatening injuries, that was an amazing job. So congratulations to the emergency management. And again, my heart aches for those that have been impacted by this. 
And our salute added as well to all first responders. Matt Sesney with important tips and Brian Crowley next. At WPTV, we're pledging to help with the recovery every step of the way. WPTV and the Scripps Howard Fund are teaming up to support tornado victims. Please join us October 15th as we partner with restaurants in Wellington, Stewart, and Fort Pierce. The owners will donate a portion of their sales that day to the Scripps Howard Foundation. Our team will be at all of these locations all day, so please be sure to come out and meet us and enjoy great food. You can also donate directly by using the QR code on your screen or go to WPTV.com forward slash relief. Every dollar will go to local charities to help the victims that need it most. Still to come, the claims for Hurricane Milton will be in the billions statewide. I sit down with Matt Sesney to get you some tips before you file any claims.